desert. Ooh, it feels good out here. It's cold. I like this cold weather. From the coast. No. Where I live, the offshore breezes bring in the kind of wet weather, you know, from the ocean, and it just brings it inland up to a point. And then by noon, usually, sometimes later, it burns off. <laughs> sometimes not. When I used to live in a San Clemente, California, I, uh, I remember there were days where it didn't burn off. <laughs> it was like, okay, this is summer, and I'm living on the beach, you know, and guess what? We're not going to see the sun. <laughs> and it was hilarious. I uh, enjoyed parts of it, but there were aspects of it that I didn't like. This I like. It feels like a winter storm, and I, I enjoy that. I like the coolness of it. It's refreshing for me. But then I like the sun, too. In streams in the desert, bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto horns of the altar. Psalm 118, 27. Is not this altar inviting you? Shall we not ask to be bound to it? that we may never be able to start back from our attitude of consecration. There are times when life is full of roseate light and we choose the cross. At other times, when the sky is gray, we shrink from it. It is well to be bound. Wilt thou bind us, most blessed spirit, and enamor us with the cross, and let us never leave it? Bind us with the scarlet cord of redemption and the gold cord of love and the silver cord of Advent hope, so will we not go back from it, or wish for another lot than to be the humble partners with our Lord in his pain and sorrow. The horn of the altars invites thee, wilt thou come? Wilt thou dwell ever in a spirit of resigned humility, and give thyself wholly to the Lord? That must be really an old, old one. <laughs> The story is told of a colored brother who, at a camp meeting, tried to give himself to God. Every night at the altar, he consecrated himself. But every night before he left the meeting, the devil would come to him and convince him that he did not feel any different. And therefore, he was not consecrated. Again and again, he was beaten back by the adversary. Finally, one evening, he came to the meeting with an axe and a big stake. After consecrating himself, he drove the stake into the ground and just where he had knelt. After he was leaving the building, the devil came to him as usual and tried to make him believe that it was all a farce. And once he went back to the stake and pointing to it said, Now look here, Mr. Devil. Do you see that stake? Well, that's my witness that God is, has forever accepted me. Immediately the devil left him and he had no further doubts on the subject. Still small voice. Beloved, if you're tempted to doubt the finality of your consecration, drive a stake down somewhere and let it be your witness before God. Even the devil that you've settled the question forever. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I read old stories of the devil this and the devil that. and You know, we used to sing a song, Shut the door, keep out the devil. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Shut the door, keep out the devil. Light the candle, everything's all right. But to a certain degree, there's a amount of people that will pass off the responsibility of their own personal growth and development and natural inclination to sin to the devil as though it were always his fault and not sometimes our own participation in those things which are consequences of our action. In other words, if you stick your finger in the fire, you're going to get burned. <laughs> that makes sense. If you put your finger in water, it's going to get wet. That makes sense. Well, if you stick yourself in a position of sin, you're going to sin. That makes sense. So, to make sense out of what really goes on, you know, the devil's just an angel. He, he has a certain amount of ability in this world because he's the god of this world, but he's not a god. It's just an angel. It's just someone that happens to be a created being that has the ability to cause those circumstances around us to influence us 
but not to overwhelm us, not to destroy us, but to tempt us. And that is something that we can say no to and not have a problem. But if we give in to the temptation, then we participate with it and we go the extra mile. We go that one step farther. We go into sin. So, for me, lots of times the devil this and the devil that is just too much devil and not enough God. So, I would rather focus in on what God can do than what Satan can do or the devil can tempt with or whatever issues we may have and thinking that somehow, you know, we're, you know, special because he's focused in on us. And the reality is, no, your flesh, nine times out of ten, is more focused on you than you are. And it's just crucifying our flesh and the lust thereof that needs to be done, more so than shooting arrows at the devil that he isn't anywhere near to be found. <laughs> there is a time and a place where he may come to you and visit, but more often than not, it's your own flesh and your own reaping what you sow that causes you to blame the devil more than nail your flesh to the cross. When you realize it's you, then you can deal with it. When you keep blaming someone else, guess what? You can keep telling them to be gone, but if he ain't there, it's sure a waste of hot air.